keeps his leg drive going and goes down to about the three yard line. Iowa leading 14 to nothing. The Spartans have a break here as Hollis fumbles and Hudis recovers by Michigan State on the Spartan two. In the third quarter, now, as we start the third quarter, Kemmeling, a soccer player, kicks to Moran on the six, and Jerry returns it to the Iowa 39, where he's down by Albrecht. Iowa still leading in this ball game, 14 to nothing, with the first and 10 on the Hawkeye 39. Ferguson moves to his right, gets behind blocking by Joe Williams, clears himself at the sideline, and scrambles for 24 yards for the Hawkeyes. The Spartans, later in the ball game, went ahead. Adderley doesn't quite make it. He stopped a little bit short of the goal line. And then with a third and goal on the Iowa two, Sharon dives over center for the touchdown. Brandstatter is now in action, and if he makes his point, the Spartans will lead the Hawkeyes. It's all knotted up 14-14. The left footer gets his kick away. It's good. And Iowa is 14, Michigan State 15, 4.49 to play. With a second and three to go on the Iowa 38, Williams fumbles, and Clark recovers for Michigan State on the Iowa 38. And with a clinching play, Wilburn Hollis is through the middle. He stopped briefly, picks his leg action up, and streaks into the end zone, 23 yards and a touchdown, Moore kicked the extra point, and it was Iowa 27, Michigan State 15. Well, Levy and Duffy shake hands after the sensational win for the Hawks, and the young gold and black were now deeply entrenched as a contender and certainly one of the favorites for the Big Ten title. Well, back home to the friendly confines of Iowa Stadium, Coach Evey sends his undefeated Hawkeyes against the also unbeaten Badgers of Wisconsin. The Big Ten champions were not expected to have much, but with three wins under their belt, they flew into Iowa with fire in their eyes and a hope for a win over Iowa before a regionally televised football classic. Wisconsin scored early and led 7-0, and then in the second quarter, Hollis fires to Perkins to start things going. In the third quarter, Wolburn Hollis scoots for 10 yards around the right and finally driven out of bounds on the far side of the field. And a worried coach, Eveshevsky, on the sideline looks the situation over. It's a tough game with these Badgers. With a first and 10 on the Wisconsin 41, Miller goes back to pass, fires down the field, gets intercepted by Robinson, who returns it 11 yards. We're now in the fourth quarter in the game with Wisconsin. It is Wilburn Hollis in action once again. Number 20 fakes a handoff, rolls to his left, fires, receiving is Winston, and the overall pickup is 29 yards. This is Jim Winston on a pass from Wilburn Hollis. And now Wilburn Hollis in action, fakes a handoff to Williams, fakes a pitch out, and then angles into the end zone for another Iowa touchdown. That made it Iowa 21, Wisconsin 7. Later, Wisconsin trailed by two points after their third TD, and then Ron M Miller brilliantly hits Richter in the end zone for a two-point conversion, and our ball game is all knotted up. Hollis is back in the pocket, gets pretty good protection, lofts a high one down the field, Ferguson is there, Touchdown, Iowa, but it doesn't count. Iowa was offside. Let's try it again. Harris is in at halfback. Hollis back in the pocket. He spots Sammy, throws a high one. The defender is there. They fight for it, and Sammy takes it for the winning Iowa touchdown, and Iowa won 28-21 to in a thriller. and homecoming. With homecoming came the upstart Purdue Bottomakers, winners over the powerful Buckeyes of Ohio State 24-21, and losers only to pass-minded Wisconsin. The Hawks now are rated number one in the nation. 
The pageantry of a Big Ten football game is unmatched, and Purdue's Silver Twins and the terrific Iowa band quickly get the sellout crowd in the mood for the thriller to follow. With a third and four on the Iowa 42, Wilburn Hollis is back, fires a pass out on the flat to Morin. He gets behind blocking and finally picks up 19 yards down to the Purdue 32-yard line. With a third and three situation for Purdue, as we reverse sides, Allen completes to Harris for 15 yards. Iowa led now 14 to nothing in the third quarter. Morin gets behind blocking and rambles for 19 yards against Purdue. It's a first and goal a little bit later on the Purdue six yard line when Wilburn Hollis rolls out of his familiar quarterback spot and then outspeeds the defending Boilermakers into the end zone for a touchdown. Hollis held more kick to point, and the Hawks led 21 to nothing, but there was more to come. Harris, a little bit later, gets the Hawks out of a tremendous jam with a beautiful 29-yard sprint. In the interim, Purdue had fired for two touchdowns. The Hawk lead was just 21-14. And now with the third and 10 on the Purdue 26, Hollis passes. It's intercepted by Tiller and Tiller returns it about 17 yards. A later passing attack was halted by the clock and the Hawks won this thriller 21 to 14. Yes, once again, the fans were thrilled and weak with exhaustion. As for the third week in a row, Iowa had pulled out a spine tingling wins. <laughs> Rated 11 from Lawrence, Kansas, flew into Iowa City to battle the number one ranked Hawkeyes. Kansas University, once beaten by then number one Syracuse and future winners of the Big Eight Conference. The speed of the Jayhawks was not just on paper, as they proved later to be a foe of tremendous talent. Iowa had just finished four Big Ten struggles in a row, and the embattled Hawks were out to protect their rating and keep their undefeated string going, but Kansas had an upset in mind. In the first quarter, Jerry Morin slips around left end, cuts in, and picks up about six yards. With a second and four on the Kansas 30, Wilburn Hollis, showing his speed and versatility, slips out around right end, outruns a Kansas secondary, and into the end zone, 30 yards away for an Iowa touchdown. Moore's point was good, and Iowa led seven to nothing. Here is a defensive play for the Hawkeyes. Hadel is back to punt, but he loses six yards, attempting to get the kick away. And now with a second end goal on the Kansas three, after that uh, defensive play, Ferguson hurls his way into the end zone for the Iowa touchdown. Iowa then led a little later, 14 to nothing. In the third quarter with a first and 10, Moran slips over left guard for eight yards. Kansas was penalized half the distance, and with a second and one on the Kansas two, Wilburn Hollis rolls over the top into the end zone, and Iowa led 21 to nothing. Well, the Jayhawks scored late to make it 21 to seven. And in the fourth quarter, Hadel takes a lateral pass, watch it thrown, and throws deep to Sperney in the end zone. But defensive work in the end zone makes it an incompleted forward pass. And in the final play of the game, Matt Sacconi is back in the pocket, throws to Robinson, and Robinson picks up 16 yards on the play. It was Iowa 21, Kansas 7. A tremendous effort by the Kansas team, but after the tumult and the shouting, the University of Iowa Hawkeyes were still unbeaten and still the number one team in the nation and had run their consecutive scoring streak to 71. It was now all aboard for Minnesota. you couldn't find a seat in Minneapolis the week of this big one, and if you did have a pair of tickets, you were a privileged individual. Yes, this was the game of the year. Two undefeated football powerhouses meeting head-on for the number one rating, and an Iowa win would cinch a share of the Big Ten title. With a second and five on the Iowa 30, Ferguson breaks through the hole on the left side of the line, rambles for 21 yards, 
and a first down for the Hawkeyes. At the Minnesota 49, with Iowa in possession of a first down, once again, Larry Ferguson rambles off tackle and gets 11. It's fourth and 12 on the Gopher 20 when Matt Sacconi in at quarterback spots Felton Rogers and hits him on a clutch play for 14 yards and a first down. The Hawk attack was stalled and the Hawkeyes are gonna try for a field goal. So Tom Moore will kick from that position on the field. Hollis held and Tom Moore's kick was a 28 yard field goal. And at this stage, Minnesota led seven to three. In the third quarter, with a second and 10 on the go for 40, on a reverse, Larry Ferguson picks up 19 yards and an Iowa first down. Well, Tom Moore's kick was good, and Iowa led briefly 10 to seven. But Minnesota regained the lead, 27 to 10, and the final score for the Golden Gophers, that was a 21-10 lead. Salem makes it 27-10 with that quarterback sneak. Matt Sacconi, moves out in the flat, fires to Rogers, and the pickup is nine yards. With a fourth and one on the Iowa 20, and the final gasp for the Iowa Hawkeyes, Robinson runs for 28 yards as the game ends. And the Golden Gophers on the big one were hot this day, winning 27 to 10. to be Iowa's last home game for their coach Evashevsky, and the band saluted the great leader with a formation on the field. This was also Dad's day as the proud fathers were on the sideline to watch their sons in action against one of the great teams in the nation. Into action in the first quarter, once again, brilliant Wilburn Hollis sprints for 16 yards around right end to get the offense going. Now it's Iowa again, Hollis passing to Mosley. The pickup is 15 yards for Gene. Larry Ferguson once again scrambles over right tackle and watch him go for 25 big yards against the Buckeyes. It's second and goal down on the Buckeye one a few moments later. So Sacconi escorts the football into the end zone. And with the extra point, it was Iowa 21 and the Buckeye six. First and 10 on Ohio State 39 a little bit later. Sacconi passes and he hits Ferguson. The pickup is 16 yards. It's first and 10 on the Buckeye 23. Sacconi, the sophomore from Pennsylvania in again, hits Rogers. 421 yards, almost into the end zone. With a first and goal now on the Buckeye two after a penalty, Sacconi racks the end zone marker. Well, he's just a little bit short on this one. So Matt Sacconi has Joe Williams angled to the left, and he's into the end zone for the touchdown. And with Sacconi holding, Moore's extra point was good. Irish of Notre Dame. Contrasting records were displayed at South Bend, where Iowa was 7-1, Notre Dame won 7. With national ranking at stake and another brilliant season to protect, the gold and black were determined that Evie would go out a winner. It was a beautiful football day, and the setting was perfect. Iowa also had one ear cocked on reports of the Minnesota-Wisconsin game at Madison, a Badger win would give the title to Iowa, but later reports showed Minnesota over Wisconsin. Well, let's get into the ball game. Hollis, early in the ball game, hits Rogers on a clutch play for 11 and a first down on the Irish 16-yard line. Joe Williams then slashes over left tackle, watch the Rahway bullet go at an angle and into the Notre Dame end zone for the touchdown. Iowa led then seven to nothing. In the second quarter, speedy Sammy Harris, called Mercury by his teammates, caught the Irish flat-footed and watched Sammy move for 34 yards to the Notre Dame 28, where LaMonica finally shoved him out of bounds. A 
little bit later, Matt Sacconi, brilliant sophomore quarterback for the Hawkeyes, goes back in the pocket, gets blocking, lofts a beautiful pass taken by Bill Whistler of Yankton, South Dakota, in the end zone for another Iowa touchdown. Both kicks were good. Iowa had a two-touchdown lead. This time, Hollis is back, spots Ferguson out in the flat, and the Hollis to Ferguson combination picks up 21 yards and a first down. Still air-minded, Wilburn Hollis moves to the air once again. Fires down the field. This time, it's Felton Rogers picking it up inside the five, just as the third quarter ended. In the fourth quarter, Wilburn Hollis takes things in his own hand and slips into the Notre Dame end zone for the Hawkeye touchdown. And a little bit later to show the versatility of this Hawkeye defense, Descendio and Humphrey throw Hafner for a 13-yard loss. Then with fourth and 23 to go, Dayton Perry moves in against the blue and gold of Notre Dame and gets quarterback Hafner for a 10-yard loss and Iowa took over on the Hawkeye 43-yard line. And with the finest run of the day, Mosley, number 32, gets a handoff from Sacconi, finds no opening, skirts wide. It looks as if he might be out of bounds here, but he isn't, and rambles for 36 yards to the Irish 20, where he was finally caught by three Notre Dame tacklers. Mosley bucks for two, and then plunges for the Iowa touchdown. Well, Iowa had it this day. Even though the Irish were sky high, Iowa was able to exploit most Notre Dame errors to their advantage, and they were stingy on defense, holding Notre Dame to a total of 95 yards. And now let's meet the seniors. Jerry Moran, captain from Wyandotte, Michigan. Mark Manders, Des Moines, guard. Tackle Charlie Lee out Fair Oaks, California way. A fine defensive back, Don Tucker. Outstanding fullback, Gene Mosley. And a law student from Chicago, Lloyd Humphreys. Also not pictured, Tom Moore and Bill Ringer. 